welcome, Quaster here, back with another video, and today we are looking at yet again another Life Staff video. Now, I've been having a lot of fun healing this season, and so I decided it was time to just punch out a bunch of Life Staff videos of all the different combos that I've been trying to play around with. So, we've done quite a few now with Hammer, Great Axe, Blunderbuss, I've done Great Sword in the past, and today is the day for Hatchet. So, today's video is going to revolve around Life Staff and Hatchet. Before we fully get into today's video, I do just want to say if this video does help you out or if you just like the content in general, please drop the video a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this from me, definitely subscribe to the channel. I do try to post weekly and it does help me out a lot. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And let's get into the hatchet video. All right, getting it started today. As always, we are going to start with looking at the gear now. Again, if you've been watching my previous Life Staff videos, my armor and my jewelry and actually the Life Staff I'm using has not changed, so you can kind of skip past this part. But if you haven't seen those videos, um, I'll go through my armor really quickly. So what I end up doing for my Life Staff or for my healer builds in general is for PvP, I like to run Refreshing Evasion. Now, I don't have as much on this build as I might run, you know, in general. I have one stack missing that uh, I still want to get replaced, but it's not too bad because I actually have Refreshing. But in general, for PvP, I run Refreshing Evasion. Um, I'm a lot more active than I am in PvE, and then on the PvE side, I like to go with more straight Refreshing as opposed to Evasion. Um, I don't find myself needing to dodge as often uh, in PvE, so I'm not as active in that sense. So definitely, um, I like to go Refreshing Evasion for that reason. Um, but as you can see, my armor um, all has Resilient on it, Refreshing Evasion, if I was able to get it on there. And then I do want to get more freedom. So ideally, I want to replace like the Invigorated. Um, I have two stacks of Invigorated that I'll probably replace with Freedom down the road, just because if I do get caught out with any of that CC, it is nice to be able to get away. Uh, as for jewelry, I also have two stacks of Refreshing Evasion on my amulet and my earring. So in total, I do have five stacks of it, which does cut down my cooldowns quite a bit. Um, on my beacon, it's about two seconds shaved off every single time I dodge. Um, so you can actually get those cooldowns back really, really quickly with Refreshing Evasion. But obviously, like if you're doing PvE and you're doing a lot more standing still, then Refreshing seems to be kind of a better option. For my ring, I do run the Hardy Sacred and Nature Damage, um, as well as Rune Glass for Nature Damage in my armor. I do like getting that extra buff, that extra damage output. Um, since I run a lot of different like off weapons that aren't you know just a Void Gauntlet or a Rapier, um, it is nice to do a little bit more damage with those. Um, now, Hatchet doesn't do a ton of damage, and we'll go over that once we actually look into uh, the actual build itself. But in general, uh, I'll always have Nature Damage on my ring. Uh, I do still run the Glowing Life Crystal Staff because I'm still running Divine Embrace. Uh, if you are running Divine Embrace, this is, I mean, it's a really, really good life staff. I do highly recommend it. Um, it's its kind of the go-to uh, for a lot of healers. If you're running Divine Embrace, if you're not running Divine Embrace, then it's not really as, as needed because obviously it's a wasted perk. Um, but there's a lot of life staffs out there that you could go with instead of that. So... For my hatchet, this is actually one that I've had for a bit now. Um, it's got Rogue, Chain Nature, Refreshing Distancing Throw. The Rogue, I don't really care too much about. It just happened to have it on there. The Refreshing Distancing Throw and the Chain Nature are the two things that I really liked on it. Um, I wasn't sure on the Refreshing Distancing Throw if I would like it, but actually as an escape system or an escape ability, it's really, really nice. Uh, you do get the rooting off of it. And then if you are within six meters, it actually does cut down the cooldown quite a bit. So it's a pretty big reduction. Um, and you can actually get that back again and uh, essentially just set up another uh, another peel or escape for yourself. So definitely, um, I would recommend some form of nature damage, whether it's chain, attunement, anything like that. And then the refreshing distancing throw, I do really like. The other option is you could go with exhausting... Um, exhausting throw i forget exactly what that perk is called but i don't run it um that also involves you to get a direct hit this one obviously involves a direct hit as well but um it allows for more escape the other one is going to be more offensive if that makes sense so more escape as opposed to more offensive 
So that is what we got for the gear. Um, heart rune, I'm still running Biobomb as always, but you can definitely change up your heart rune depending on what you prefer to run. Um, just kind of depends, but you could go stone form, uh, Biobomb like myself, really any of those uh, heart runes work just fine as a healer. Just depends on how you want your heart rune to work for you. Um, but next, let's take a look at the attributes and then we'll get into mastery. Taking a look at attributes here, this is my typical layout for how I like to run my attributes. Um, for con, I'll usually run anywhere between 110 and 117. Um, the 117 more or less just allows me to use a cheaper con food, so I can use a 33 con food and still get up to 150. If I go 110 con, then I'm able to take a 40 con food, still get up to 150. Now, a lot of healers do run 200 con, and there's nothing wrong with that by any means. I like to run 150. I've always ran 150. I don't find an issue with survivability. There might be a, a situation or two where I find that, yeah, it's nice to have a little bit of extra armor, but I also find where there's a lot more moments for myself where I like having the extra focus because I do more damage and I'm doing more healing. So it's definitely a trade-off, but if you want to go for more survivability, definitely go 200 con. Your healing output is still going to be really good with that. Um, I wouldn't go any more than 200 con. Uh, I think then you're starting to take too much away from your healing side, but um, anywhere between 150 and 200, I would stick in there. All right, let's take a look over at the mastery next. Okay, so first we are going to go through the life staff really quickly now. Again, if you have seen my previous uh, healing videos or life staff with other weapon videos, um, this has not changed. So you can definitely just skip to the hatchet part, but for those who have not seen those videos, I'll go through it really quickly. So these are the three abilities I like to run. I like to run Beacon, Sacred Ground, and Divine Embrace. And then with the Glowing Life Crystal Staff, we also get the, you know, refreshing Divine Embrace. So we get that cooldown really quickly. Um, but these are the three abilities that I run. I'm not going to go deep into the passives right now, um, but you can kind of take a look at how I have this laid out. You definitely want to make sure that you're getting Divine Blessing because that's a huge uh, buff in your healing. Uh, two other perks that I would highly recommend is going to be the Bendelite protector strength those two also buff your healing and then from there i like to run intensify so then we get the heavy attacks that also buff healing um, really anything that's buffing healing or reducing cooldown like revitalize anything like that you just really want to get um, you want to get cooldowns back really really quickly but also you want to be buffing as much as you can uh, with those heals so you know, if someone's below 50% health, we're healing them for a bunch. Plus, with the Divine Embrace Shared Struggle, you're going to pass that healing from that first person onto the next person. I don't run Rebound because then it's it's essentially just you're bouncing to another person yet. Um, and personally, I think if you end up going with that, you end up taking away from one of the other perks. And honestly, like the only one that I would maybe take away from would be Protector's Touch. But that's a 15% Fortify for free. Um, which makes a pretty big difference when you're getting shot by like bows or fire staff. So I do recommend running this one. Um, but if you don't want to run that and you want to try running rebound, I would just pull that, try rebound, see how you like it. I haven't liked it in the past, but see how you do. All right, next uh, we have the hatchet here. Um, so this hatchet build is a little bit goofy. Uh, I'm not a hatchet main by any means, um, but I want to put something together that had some survivability to it. Um, my whole idea with the hatchet for myself is it's just functional. We're not going to be getting kills with it. We're not going to be, you know, we can't go chasing down too many people with this because our damage output's really low. Um, unlike with hammer or something, we can actually do that. Um, but with hatchet, we are running berserk. Berserk is going to be um, not so much for the damage output, but it is going to be for us to have a bit of an escape um kind of gives you a little bit of a health boost stuff like that um removes all the slow stunts so uh, overall berserk is just really really good to have because it is going to allow you to get out of cc's and, and stuff like that um we do work down to defy death because defy death is going to be also part of your escape and then you get the restore 500 health plus 50 percent of your base health upon activation so uh, i do think that like you need to run Defy Death uh, with this build or with a life staff at least because you are not a DPS by any means. You don't have the DPS output um, if you have it set up the same way I do. And then for the throwing side, we're running social distancing. 
Um, again, we do have our perk on our hatchet that does cut down our cooldown time if they're within six meters. And I will say it's pretty often you will have someone chasing you. By the time you actually turn, throw, all that, a lot of times they're going to be within six meters. You'll get that cooldown. And then if you pop your berserk on top of that, you get the movement speed. So like you have a lot of escape with hatchet. It's just if you miss, um, you're running. You know, if, if you miss that social distancing, you're running and it can be kind of tricky to get away. Um, but as you can see with the cooldown, it's a 16.6 second cooldown. So getting that for what is it like a 40% cooldown reduction um, if they're within six meters is pretty huge. I think it cuts it down to like eight seconds, seven seconds, something like that. I forget exactly what it is, but really, really good to have, uh, in my opinion, from an escape standpoint. And then for the last ability that we run, we run Infected Throw. Now, from my last video, you know with the Plague Doctor build with the Blunderbuss, I really, really liked that. Uh, I had so much disease with that build, and so I had to go that route with this as well. And so with the Infected Throw, it's actually a bigger disease than if you have Plagued Splitting Grenade on your Blunderbuss. And so really, what I'm doing is I am playing a little bit more passive and then once I'm on point or once I'm near point and I can see the enemy like doorway in OPR, I'm throwing that infected throw. I'm trying to get the infected throw to be in the doorway so every single person who walks through has to walk through the cloud which is going to disease and weaken them. So, I mean, I, I, I really like it. I think it's really good. Um, do I like it as much as Blunderbuss as far as the gameplay itself? No, but if you are someone who's more of a melee type of a player and you really like Hatchet especially but you want to heal, I think it's really, really fun. Um, I am not a huge fan of Hatchet as far as DPS goes. I have ran it in the past, but I, this kind of change of using it for more of a defensive use and just more of a, a functionality use um, it's really interesting and, and been pretty fun to try to adjust and use it um, but this is what I've got for my hatchet build definitely tweak things as you need it um, if you want to go more of a DPS side of it you can go feral rush or anything like that so definitely change it up um, for your play style and what fits you best but for a functional like you're back in your team up you are a support player on your team I think this is a really, really good option to go with, and I've had a lot of fun with it, um, which that is the most important thing. Have fun with your builds. Have fun with the game. But that is the build itself. Um, I do have a little bit of gameplay from this build, so I'll throw that up now so you can take a look, um, and we will watch that. <laughs> All right, that is going to do it for today's video. So thank you very much to those who are watching today. I really do appreciate it. Um, again, if this video does help you out or if you just like it in general, please drop it a like. And if you do want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel. Um, it really, really does help me out. We're very, very close to getting to 400. Um, and then we just got to keep climbing from there. So I do appreciate everyone watching the video, stopping by, all of that. Um, I also do stream throughout the week on Twitch. So if you do want to stop by a stream, ask some questions live, or just hang out and chat, uh, you're always welcome to stop on by. We would love to have you. Otherwise, that is going to do it for today's video. So until next time, I'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.